You might want to be able to take a long piece of video and cut it into shorter, more manageable pieces for editing. And you can do this in speed edit quite easily. I'm going to go ahead and load up a piece of video. It's about three and a half minutes long. And let's say I wanted to cut this into shorter, more manageable pieces before I started editing. Well, I'm going to go back out to the video folder here and I'm going to make a new directory. We'll make a folder and we'll call it music video because that's what this piece of video is, is a music video. And we'll call it music video clips. And we'll go into music video clips. And now I can start cutting some pieces out. So I can look through the video here and I can find a piece that I want to use. And I'll go ahead and again I can use my arrow keys and I can go backwards and forwards, get right to the place where I want to make the cut. And then I'll hit the C key and I will razor the clip. And then I'll move out with the arrow key and I'll find where I want the out point to be and I'll hit the C key. I now have the clip defined right here and I can take this clip and I can drag it right into that file bin. And When I drag it into the file bin it makes a reference of the clip and you can see that it's gone here. I can actually hit Control Z and undo it and get it back. Now I have it in both places. But I've now been able to remove this clip as an independent clip. Now one of the nice things about that clip is it does have the rest of the video on either side of it that I can use for transitions. So it's not a destructive edit, it's just creating a pointer file that you can now use when you start editing. Remember that these instances that are created are just pointer files back to the main video clip. So they don't take up any space on the hard drive, they're very very small, and they're just referencing the original video clip. Let's go ahead and define some keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to click on the timeline down here just to make sure it's the dominant window. And now I'm going to use the arrow key. So the right arrow key allows me to go a frame at a time if I tap on it. And again the left arrow key a frame at a time tapping on the left arrow to come back. Now if I hold the right arrow key down it plays the clip at normal speed. If I hold down shift and I hold down the right arrow, it plays it fast forward. Now again, the left arrow being held down will play normal speed in reverse. Shift and the left arrow will play reverse at a faster speed. So as I move through the edit, I'm going to define my next clip here. And I'm going to, again, select the clips that I want to work with. I'm going to hit the C key. I'm going to get out to the ending part of that clip, which is right there. I'm going to hit the C key. Now again, I have a new clip defined right here. I can drag the clip into the file bin, just like we did the first time, and then hit Control Z to get it back. I can also select a clip, and I can hold down Control, and then left click and drag on it, and it makes a copy of it, so that way I wouldn't have to undo. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that with the Delete key. Now again, this is making pointer files, not making new clips. I do have the ability to create a new clip as well. If I have the area selected that I want to work with, I can right click on that clip and I can come down and I can say I'd like to render the selected area. And this will allow me to go ahead and render this clip as a new clip. Again, that's going to take up a little more room on the hard drive and so forth. But then I have physical clips to work with instead of just the pointer files. The thing to remember about doing this is I will not have the extra video on either end of the clip now. It is going to be defined by what you have defined as an in and an out point. When rendering a clip you have many options in selecting the format that you want to render at and whether you want to render just the video, just the audio, or both so you do have the ability to strip one away from the other. Rendering the clips would allow me to pick out just the portions of the video that I want to use, render them out, and then go ahead and delete the big video clip off the hard drive to reclaim that hard drive space. Always remember when you're defining your clips to give yourself a little bit extra on the front end and the back end to accommodate for transitions. Just a final note on keyboard shortcuts. You can get all of the keyboard shortcuts that are available for any of the modules inside of SpeedEdit by hitting F1. 
and F1 is going to bring up the keyboard shortcuts for whatever is currently dominant. And what I mean by that is if I'm clicked on the storyboard or the timeline area, I'm going to get the keyboard shortcuts for those areas. If I click on the add media window and I hit F1, I get the keyboard shortcuts for the add media window. If I happen to click on a video clip, I'm going to go to the control tree and go to the positioner and click on the positioner and hit F1. I get the keyboard shortcuts for the positioner. So depending upon which window is currently dominant, that's what you're going to get the keyboard shortcuts for when you hit the F1 key.